torque, the symbol is a lowercase tau. The equation for torque is R cross F. This is the cross product or the vector product. So you know those things you learned in your math classes that you didn't know what they were for? I get to give meaning to many of them. One of them is cross product. Uh, note, this is, if we're not going to use unit vectors, the torque would be equal to RF sine theta. Please remember the right-hand rule. Don't worry, we will take some time to go through some examples of the right-hand rule today for short. Uh, please remember for the vector product, the cross product, that the order does matter. So this is not the same as F cross R. Please be aware of that. Torque, the, the, the order matters. So if you were curious, the way it works is A cross B is actually equal to the negative of B cross A. That's how it ends up working. Uh, and just an of note, be aware that if you were perhaps to take the derivative of the cross product, that you would need to use the product rule where we'd have D A with respect to time cross B plus uh, A with the cross product of the derivative of B as a function of time. So we would just follow the basic product rule. We do need to go through and remember how to use unit vectors and the cross product because many of you have forgotten and you do need to remember. So let's just say we have a vector A which is negative I plus J minus 2K and vector B which is equal to 2i minus 3j plus 4k. In order to figure out the cross product of A cross B, what do I need to write on the board now? How do we figure out the cross product? You guys remember the cross product? Yes, Mr. Palmer, I, I did the cross product in what class? Pre-count? Okay, so for some of you it might have been a little while. That's okay. We can review. What are we going to write now? Move it. Uh, we have to make a matrix. What goes across the top row of the matrix, please, Catherine? Um, I, J, and K. I, J, and K. We've got the unit vectors. I, J, and K. The next row is going to be our A vector, or negative 1, 1, and negative 2. Then our B vector, 2, negative 3, and positive 4. Now, I'm going to write this out the first time. This next step is not one that you have to do every time, but it's a good memory one to remember how the cross product works. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to do a matrix that we're going to multiply by the unit vector i. And the way, we, if you remember the way we figure that one out, is it's everything that's left over after we cross off the column and row that has the i vector in it. So it's 1, negative 2, negative 3, and 4. So what we're left with is just this piece. Now, please remember that the first one is positive, the second one is negative. We add the i one, and then we're going to subtract the one for the j vector. What is the matrix we have left over when we use the j um, unit vector here? Michael. Sure. This is what we got for the i. What's that? This is the matrix we multiply by the unit vector i. What do we multiply by the unit vector j? Negative 1, negative 2, 2. Right. That's what we have left when we remove the row and column for the j. And then we add what is the matrix here. Um, the so? Um, uh, negative 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. Multiplied by our unit vector k. Okay. Now, what is our next step? Emily? You have to find the difference. So for the first time, it would be 1 times 4 minus negative 2 times negative 3. And that is what we have multiplied by our unit vector i. And then we do the same thing for all the other ones. We have negative of the quantity, negative 1, 
times 4 minus negative 2 times 2, all multiplied by j, plus the quantity negative 1 bless you times negative 3 minus 1 times 2, unit vector k. Okay, as we walk through here, we get 4, let's see, 4 minus a minus a minus of 6, so 4 minus 6, or negative 2i minus a negative 4 plus 4, or 0j plus 3 minus 2, or k. How did I do? Did I get that right? Awesome. So you can see there is our answer. For those of you who forgot how to do the cross product. Do you always put the negative before J? So it's actually, if we had more in our matrix, we, we, it's always, it goes positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. It just alternates. It just happens to be that we only go up to three, so it's positive, negative, positive. Jenkins. Uh, would you want the zero J left? You don't necessarily have to give that in the answer. I just gave it for complete sake. In addition, you don't actually have to do this step. This is a step you can skip if you want to. Um, but it's helpful at this stage when we don't remember it at all. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. So let's do, let's bring it back. That's just the math. Oh, by the way, what? Does anybody remember what the cross product actually represents? <laughs> Good. The cross product actually represents, if we have our vector r and our vector f, the cross product um, would represent the area of the parallelogram created by these two vectors r and f. And if we take r cross f, this area has a direction. We take r cross f. So r cross f go into the board. And this would be into the board. Don't worry, we'll go more through that in a little bit here. Okay. So I want to do some specifics with the um, yeah, that, that, yes, I know. I know you still don't get it. That's okay. So what I want to get here is that realize that the cross product basically represents the area of the parallelogram created by the two vectors. And we'll go through, we're about to go through directions. Okay. Just to get directions, if vector A is equal to I and vector B is equal to J, I is in this direction, J is in this direction. The right hand rule, we go I cross J if we're figuring out A cross B. So your fingers point in the direction of A, your fingers curl in the direction of B, and your thumb points out of the board. Out of the board class, is it positive or negative? Negative. Just see how it's positive. That's <laughs> Out of the board is positive. Think of it this way. Instead of looking at it as, as out of the board, do it on your sheet of paper. Okay? On the sheet of paper, point your fingers in the direction of I, curl your fingers in the direction of J. Your thumb points what direction? Uh, up. Is up positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So up corresponds to out of the board. They are the same thing, right? So this would be out of the board and out of the board is positive. Okay, that's how we would use the right hand rule to figure that out. You can also doing it use it a cross b, which is going to be equal to i j k, where we have let's see, a is going to be one zero zero, b is going to be zero one zero. So when we do this for i. We're going to get, what do we get are the, the numbers we're going to multiply by i here. Bill? Um, be 0 times uh, 0 times 0 times minus. minus 0 times 1. Okay. That whole thing multiplied by i. Keep going, Bill. Okay. For j, then you do uh, 1 times 0 and 0 times 0. That whole thing multiplied by j. 
plus for k you do 1 times 1 and minus 0 times 0. If you'll notice, that works out to be k, which is the k direction would be out of the board. So notice you can use the right hand rule and the matrix cross product both give you the same thing. Okay, if we were to do the reverse, if we were instead to do B cross A, what direction do we get when we use the right hand rule now? B cross A is going to be into the board, which is negative K. It's going to give you negative K. Uh, and I won't go through this whole example, it's going to be very redundant, but you need to believe me that when you do that, you're going to get a negative k out of it. Uh, I do want to do one more having to do with that, my eraser comment. And that is instead, let's have two vectors that look like this. Let's say we have the vector r, which is equal to i meters, and the vector f, which is equal to negative i newtons. So we're applying a force at this point right here. What is the torque in that case? Torque equals r cross f. Say again? So your torques look just like your eyes. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, no, it does, it's, it, yeah, it does look just like the eye, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Okay, we have torque equals R cross F. What do we get for this torque? We'll figure it out, but you should be able to identify this from what you know about Torque. Jenkins. Zero. Zero. Remember, torque, tau, <laughs> equals <laughs> r <laughs> sine theta. So in this particular case, it doesn't matter what the value of r and f are, because what is the angle here? 180 degrees. 180 degrees, because this is our lever arm. There is our force. So it's going to be, well, actually, actually, we call that zero, actually, if I think about it. Zero degrees. But the sine of zero and the sine of 180 are both zero. zero. We can show this using um, r cross f unit vectors, i, j, k. We would get uh, for r, 1, 0, 0. For f, negative 1, 0, 0. What you get here is for the i's, it would be all 0 times 0 minus 0 times 0 i minus our j's, which is uh, 1 times 0 minus 0 times negative 1 j. Plus, for the k values, we would get the exact same thing. 